The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Adam Schefter has weighed in on the Jets' options in the NFL draft. What will the Jets do with the number 10 pick? We'll talk about that and much more in today's Jake Asman Show. My guest is Andrew Fialco joining us to break everything going down with the Jets and the NFL. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. Here we go, buddy. Let's go, baby. Good luck to the go. Irish, baby. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Jet fans. Joe Douglas knows what he's doing. Uh, you know what? I, I should probably mix in a water sip, too, so I got you. We won too many games. We're not going to get Joe off. I'm wearing the, uh, the chain, baby. Last time this was worn, it was you. Oh, you got a TOJ uh, glass there? Oh, yeah. So let's go! Hey, let's go. Salute, deal. I love it. Let's go, bro. All right, I'll have a sip of water. Just kidding. Sight. Let's go, ladies. I don't know what the hell y'all doing. Oh, Tyra Smith going to be mauling all you motherfuckers in the division next year. Oh. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go. Welcome in, Jet fans. It's time to talk all things New York Jets. Hit the like button if you're tuned in live. If you're not live watching this show, still hit the like button. It goes a long way towards this channel continuing to grow. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. And joining us right now in his weekly spot to talk all things New York Jets is our film analyst, JetsXFactor.com's finest, Andrew Fialco. What's up, Andrew? What's up, Jake? Um, excited. I, I, I really, I, I woke up today. I was like, damn, I'm excited. Uh, it's always exciting to do the show, but I don't know. I've been feeling good about the Jets lately. I guess it's the off season, but like, I've been feeling like real good for like a continuous amount of time, which is rare. So <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in, I'm in a good state right now with the Jets. Well, one month to the draft, and they find themselves in a spot that we're not in a year ago where they don't have a glaring hole that everyone can see. They they truly do have a lot of options. So it's a perfect jumping off point because I have a clip here from Adam Schefter who sat down with the Jets' in-house media team and was interviewed by Eric Allen. And this was Adam Schefter weighing in on what the Jets could potentially do with that number 10 pick. The, the, that's the great part about it, Eric, is that they address so many needs that they don't have to come away with anything. Yeah. I mean, in a way, I, I, I don't mind the idea of, hey, if there's a guy like a J.J. McCarthy still sitting there in Minnesota or Denver or Las Vegas or somebody wants to come up and they want to move up to the Jets spot mm -hmm. and the Jets get extra picks, like, nothing wrong with that, too. Um, but they have options. And if there's somebody they love there at 10, whether that's one of those offensive linemen, which I still – that's that would be my vote, an offensive lineman still uh, – Brock Bowers, whoever it may be, whatever they want to do, they're going to have some good options. And, and they've taken the pressure off them, I think, by what they've done during free agency. Do you agree yeah. with Shefty as far as the flexibility the Jets now have if they want to go in a variety of different ways with that number 10 pick? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, man, I've been going back and forth with this pick, and I'm sure we will continue going back and forth for the next month. I'm just so torn on what the Jets should do. But, like, when I, when it comes down to it, I, I feel like what where we're at, we have to do what I don't want to actually do. I'd love to just really, like, build the team the right way and take an offensive lineman. That, that's what I would choose to do. But I kind of understand where we're at. If there's an opportunity to move up to get a receiver or to move back and maybe get a receiver, I, it makes sense. I would just be worried, and obviously every Jet fan should be worried, about going into the year with Moses and Smith as our tackles, lock going to miss time, and then 
our swing tackles being Carter Warren and Max Mitchell. Like, it's not the end of the world. And I feel like every time I see a Jets beat reporter talk about Carter Warren, what do they say? The Jets talk glowingly about Carter Warren behind the scenes. They're very high on him. Before we even got Tyron Smith, it was like, well, they have, they, they, they love Carter Warren. I was like, okay, let's like, like slow down here. But that's the, like, that's the thing in the draft. If it was up to me and Fashanu is at 10 or I don't know, like – uh, now that you know I work at Jets, I, I do some work at Jets X Factor. I see Joe Blewett, who's great, talk about this uh, J.C. Latham guy, and I was watching some of his film, and I'm like, okay, like there's no reason why this guy can't go ten. The draft is very odd, where a name will pop up, and then you'll start seeing momentum gain, uh, like momentum gained on that name. Like Latham could go at twenty, and probably be, and it's very possible he'll be the best tackle. Like I, I feel like everyone thinks all is. Like the go, like the definite best tackle, and he's like a surefire prospect. I, I guess I don't like saying that about any prospect, but like back to the point, the Jets have options, and I like what you said. I was I, I, I tap into some of your shows when I can. You make a good point. You're always like, well, you said this a couple of times, and it's a good point. All the Jet fans were like, we gotta lose this game to New England because if we don't have this, uh, if we if we don't lose this game to New England, we're not gonna have a good draft pick. Well, look at how we're set up now. So I'm happy you make that point too. But yeah, we got options and a lot, a lot to think about. The 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 situation they find themselves in, it's like the argument for taking a weapon is, well, you take the weapon because that guy's gonna get out on the field, that guy's gonna play. Yeah. And if you take someone at 10, you know, that player's sitting on your bench. And I'm thinking to myself, have you seen the history of the Jets with injuries to their offensive line? And their solution to fix the O line is Tyron Smith, who in the last four years, plays about half the season, if you look at games played, on average. This year, he played more than that. He played 13, which we all would gladly take, 13 of 17 and healthy for the playoffs. Right. Fingers crossed there is playoffs to be ready for. But yep. Morgan Moses, 33, he's been an Iron Man, but he's still an older player. AVT has missed the last two years after the second week of October. Uh, this idea that they take someone at 10 on the offensive line and they wouldn't play, I, I mean – I hope that happens, but realistically, that's not the history of the Jets. I mean, Matt O'Leary did a great job. He went back to the last 14 years of the Jets' offensive line, and there was one year where their five starters week one actually made it through week 17 of that season, and it was 2012. Like, in the Joe Douglas uh, era in particular, they're never healthy up front. So I I don't get the argument of you can't take a lineman at 10 because that guy's not going to play. That guy will play, unfortunately. Right. That argument is wrong. I understand people thinking like, oh, well, we have our five set in place. Let's just go back to any year, like you just said, like in like the past like three, we have no continuity on the O-line. Why? Because like the injuries, it's just like the, the position gets injured a lot. And whether that's because of our strength and conditioning coaches or because of Keith Carter or uh, and, and a mix of bad luck, I could account for all three of the things, I think, probably and mostly bad luck, especially with ABT's injuries. It just happens. It's football. Like them adding the hip drop tackle being um, ba- banning that is going to hurt the game, not to get into that. But like it's football. So like especially these old linemen, they get rolled up on all the time. There's freak injuries to say that the kid's not going to play and we're, we're wasting our 10th draft pick. Like we like I, I feel like I've been seeing discourse like, oh, like it's just like the Will McDonald pick. Like he'll play 20 percent of the snaps. I just want you guys like, do you know how valuable those 20 percent of the snaps will be? For Aaron Rodgers' blind side or his other ta- or his right tackle position, that's what's more most important. Keeping Rodgers upright, he's coming off an Achilles tear at 39 years old. I think I'm, I have no doubt in his ability, and I think he's going to be great. But it's important that we have infrastructure up front. The trenches matter for a reason. So that's why right now I lean O line. I don't even think. I, the Bowers, I don't know if Bowers truthers are like going crazy in your comments. I don't even think about Bowers right now. That's not like that's like the third option in my in my eyes. I, I like trade up, trade down, whatever it is, O line, receiver, then Bowers. Now I have been seeing people saying Bowers is like a receiver. It's just hard when you draft a tight end and you're expecting him to be like a, a blocker as well, because tight ends have to block. It's just kind of like how it is. And we don't like Conklin's like an okay blocker. Rucker showed he was a good blocker in year one. But if we're going to draft Bowers, he's not going to just be like uh, our our power slot receiver. I'm just putting that out there. So that's why he's kind of third on my list. Look, the, the bottom line is this. If you take Bowers that high, he has to be great right away as well. And Correct. I'd be more open to Bowers if they didn't already have, I think, two legitimate tight end options 
on the roster already. Like people act like Tyler Conklin's like, you know, Jeff Cumberland or something or Jason Morrow. Like Tyler yeah. Conklin last year put up similar numbers to what Dalton Kincaid put up in Buffalo and Kincaid at Josh Allen. And, you know, right. I, I spoke with a scout last weekend that told me, well, Bowers is a much better version of Kincaid. How much better, though? Because if you're taking a tight end that high, he has to come in and be in the conversation to win offensive rookie of the year. Like, he needs to have a Sam Laporta Correct. type of impact. Yet, Laporta wasn't a first-round pick, so I'm weary of, like, the Jets being the team that properly evaluated Brock Bowers, and they get it right with that number 10 pick. That's my fear. Completely true. I mean, he's a stud. He, he He's a great prospect, and it seems like a great player. We watched his film about two months ago in here. I have watched some of his film since. He's very good. He's like... He gives me like receiver vibes. I think I said that when he was on when, when we were on about it. He's not a big, he's not a great blocker, um, which is tough. So I don't know. I'm I'm very big on right now. I don't know if my tone will change. Um, I'm fully on the O-line at at 10, trading down. Or if 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 Joey if Joe is feeling hot and he wants to trade up for like neighbors or um Marvin Harrison Jr. I'd be, I'm also down to just try and stick and maybe Roma Dunze gets to us. Um, but one of the or top three eight teams, and you can move up by only having to give up right. like a lot less than moving all the way up to five. Right. Fit wise, obviously Marvin is kind of like the, the best um, he's all around player out of the three, but neighbors would fit great. And I, I mean, they would all fit well and we, we would get into that easily, but um yeah, I mean, Joe, Douglas has decisions to make. But again, I think the bottom line is he knows he's operating right now on this kind of one-year window and then see what happens, which obviously is the tone with all the one-year deals that he's uh, dolled out. Yeah, just you, you look at kind of where they, they're, they're at and, like, they have to get this pick right. You know, like, it, it, yeah. like this could be the difference in being a playoff team or not like that's that's how important yeah. a, a top 10 asset is it's why i think i'm with Schefter. if you could trade back and get more top 100 picks you're still yeah. going to end up with a really good player and you give yourself more opportunities to maybe package extra picks to get into round two now which you don't have a second round pick to do or mm -hmm. just take two additional players and if we all believe that the draft the times could be a crapshoot you're putting yourself in position to have more opportunities to hit on one of these players that set you up going forward yeah that's the thing with the draft. Like you make a great point. And I, I want people to understand this. It's it's such a crapshoot. Like it's 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 there's no there's no such thing as a surefire. I said this earlier, but I didn't mean it. There's no such thing as a surefire prospect. I actually wanted to touch on something because and I'm not coming at um fuck, I don't know his name. The the guy that comes on and he he keeps saying this stuff about I have I have a statement to make about this, just to like clear the air about to like all the as maniacs. About the about quarterbacks, who who comes on and is like talking crazy about quarterbacks? I I, I don't want to butcher his name. Probably Gary. Gary, right? He's the one with the um. He's a lot of he's a lot of healthy takes. And look, I don't know how much film he watches. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I'm not gonna come after him either. I worked for a year and a half um, in FBS Division One football. After that, I had multiple offers to to become an assistant coach. So if you if you guys think everyone listening that. Like, that I, I don't I come from a place of like I'm I'm very humble, but I have credibility and I've I've been in the business. And I've watched film. Bottom line about quarterbacks that everyone needs to understand: every single play is subjective. So we could pull up a play of Caleb Williams hitting a check down, and when if I was with him in a room right now, this is why only the coaches know, and I think everyone deserves to know this. I could say, Hey, Caleb, like, what do you think of this rep? Like, I was so I was really happy that you went one to two to three and they got to your check down. And like it was just great job getting through progressions. He could say, "Nope, I got fooled that play. They were running combo coverage on the backside. It was man coverage this side, zone coverage this side. I should have hit the whole shot, but I, I I got through my progressions too quickly." So I just want that's the only example I'll even give. There's a there's a really good YouTube video actually by this guy like Alex something NFL. Every single play is subjective. So we might be thinking, "Holy shit!" Like Drake May just made like an insane play scrambling. He could have left a clean pocket when there was a. a a pure progression over the middle that he should have hit. So that's my only spiel about quarterbacks. I'm a huge quarterback. I worked under a quarterbacks coach at the university at Buffalo, and I understand how it works. That's why when you, I've, I've been seeing these arguments, like the Zach Wilson pick, I don't blame it. I don't blame any quarterback pick. If you have a premium pick, you're going to try and take the best, most important position in football with the film you have. 
Like, yeah, they have meetings with the kids, so it's a little bit more worrisome when you miss on the pick. But you can't translate the hardest position to play in the in the five major sports out of college as well as easy as everyone thinks it is. Like, that's why I don't even grade kids anymore. I'm not going to be like, wow, this kid is a third round grade. What do I know? I don't know what he's telling the people in a room about a highlight that I'm dissecting. Like, we all have to just take steps back and try and understand that. That's my that's my little quarterback spiel. I like it. Good rant. Yeah, you know, put yeah, you know, put the pelts on the table, Andrew. You are qualified, man. You you, you break yeah. down film as well as anyone in this space. If you're watching live, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you have a question for Andrew or I to address, write it in. Super chats will cut the line. Shout out to all the Asmaniacs out there. We gifted a ton of memberships yesterday. Hopefully that continues now over the next couple of days. I want to address something from Rick because I am offended by this comment. Is Jake wearing a Giants hoodie? Rick, it's baseball season, baby. Opening days tomorrow. I'll be in the yeah. building in Houston. Come on now. Uh, yeah. Gary writes in. Not that Gary. Different Gary. You could put Bowers and Conklin on the field together. I agree, Gary. But why are we pretending like Jeremy Rucker doesn't exist? If you take Bowers, here's the other argument on why I'm anti-Bowers at 10, Andrew. You're burning yeah. a third-round pick because you barely have played Rucker the last two years because Uzama's been under contract behind Conklin. Now Rucker gets a chance to play. You take Bowers, you burnt a third-round pick on Jeremy Rucker. We never got to see what his potential is with the Jets if you do that. I, I agree. Like, how how many how how much are we gonna like put into the tight end position? Um, are we gonna draft a third rounder than a first rounder? I, I agree, and I love you, Boa. Apparently, I I, I I wasn't like a big big fan of him or not big fan of him, but yeah, I agree. Also, I just wanted to address one of the comments. New York Jets, Florida said, Andrew, with all due respect, I brought up JJ McCarthy, and you said you didn't like him. You are not above criticism. With all due respect, that's fair. With all due respect, all I remember this. All I said was, I have a bunch of buddies that go to Michigan. I never watch their games. I actually think I said, like, like I never watched their games, so I didn't want to say if I liked him or didn't like him. All I did was look at the box score and see he didn't throw the ball that much. So that's that's really all I said. I, JJ might be good in the NFL. I have no idea. I, I'm just trying to – That's the that was the point of my spiel. I don't I don't know. So, like, people coming on here that, that watch more film than me, maybe they know. I don't know. I, I'm not going to come out here and say I know. I could give you, like, an educated opinion, but I don't know. I mean, the, the, the bottom line is, if it was easy, every team would have great okay. quarterbacks. They don't. There's two types of yeah. teams in the NFL, teams that have a franchise quarterback, teams that don't. And since in today's league, you really can't win without a really, really good one to great one. That's the only yeah. thing that matters at the end of the day. You know, that's right. why I get so frustrated with the solid discourse as if, you know, the Jets went 2-15 and 15 last year. They had a historically bad quarterback room for three straight years led by Zach Wilson who's one of the biggest busts in NFL history. And we act like, you know, the, the, like Robert Sala is responsible for that. That's nonsense. They, they can't even trade Zach Wilson because of how bad his performance has been the last three yeah. years. What does that tell you? Yeah, that it's just, it's, it's the hardest position to hit on. There's a reason. Um, I tried explaining it kind of, but it, it, it's obviously deeper than that. It's just, that's why the sport, that's why football is the best. And that's why I love football so much. Cause there's so many different takes. Like I said, everything's subjective. Everyone watches film and thinks different things. Everyone watches games and thinks different things. But you're right. It's a quarterback-driven league. It's been that way basically since, like, Mahomes really started taking things over. So, yeah, talking about Salah, talking about Joe, it's kind of tough to, like, judge them. We talked about this probably one of my first shows on here, like, six months ago. I All I said was, and we, and we agreed on it, they're going to get another year. It's just, like, bottom line, like – the Rodgers injury gave them another year. It, it, it was just what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And and to me, at the end of the day, it still makes sense given where this team is at. All right, comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. We'll continue to react to the latest Jets news. We'll see uh, in the next couple of weeks here before the draft that there's another signing or two. I think there's a chance Clowney's done uh, maybe even by yeah. the end of this week now that they're back from the league meetings. Maybe talks pick up. But we'll see. Before we do any of that, let's take a quick break. Let's talk about Roan Apparel. Let's talk about fashion, and let's talk about how to upgrade your closet. I'm going to tell you about Roan Apparel. Roan stepped up to the challenge. Their commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and truly versatile set of products known to man. They got products for every occasion. We're talking about the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, polos. The commuter collection from Roan can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to Roan.com slash 
slash Asmin and use promo code Asmin to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to R-H-O-N-E dot com slash Asmin. When you look nice, you feel nice. Once again, upgrade your closet by heading over to Roan.com and use promo code Asmin at checkout so you can receive 20% off. This one's from Hater who writes in, Andrew is correct. Latham could go at 10 or he could go at 20. It's going to be a very interesting draft. I just find it funny how it went from there's only two offensive linemen worthy of top 10 picks. And now, you know, there are multiple people that have Latham as the number one offensive lineman in the class. Like the opinions are wide ranging. I think the one consensus, though, you heard Douglas even say this, it is a stacked O-line class, which is why if I'm the Jets, I'm trying to do everything in my power. If I can't get Marvin Harrison or get neighbors, I'm trying to move back. And I know I'm still going to end up with one of these big time tackles. And if it's all yeah. crap shoot anyway, then I'll move back and take more chances with extra picks. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, I was going to actually like, tell you, I was just looking at the Matt Miller dropped his like, I don't know what, how many mocks he's done so far, but he did the entire, this is, I guess he did every pick. Um, and he has the Jets taking Bowers. I guess we knew that. But then, like, Fashanu at 11, Fuaga at 14. Is he really low on Latham also? Latham at 21. All right. Like, I don't know. If there's a guy that, like, look, the Jets are – we got to trust the Jets front office here. But if there's a guy that's like, going to go 10 picks a lot later and, and is supposed to be as good, at least from what I've heard, I see, I see no issue trading down. Um, and recouping picks. I think that would be extremely helpful. Look, it's easier said than done. I, I fully understand that, but you have to try, I think, if you can't if you can't get one of the big three receivers and all is not there, and let's say he's their number one tackle, if you have similar grades on some of these tackles, I think it just it's in the best interest of your team to try and get some extra draft yeah. capital. When you have, you know, several positions here where this draft is so deep, you need another tackle, you need another receiver. The more picks you get, the better chance you can to hit on one of those position players. Right. Like you said, it's like we've said, it's a crapshoot. You want as many dart throws as you could have, um, and you hope that all the scouting you've done is worth it. And look, I, I feel like Joe gets a bad rep just because of Zach, but I, I think he's made some also very good moves in the draft, trading up for ABT. Um, obviously, the Sauce, Jermaine, um, Garrett draft class was awesome. Um, getting Michael Carter in the sixth round, and he's – Probably my second favorite nickel in the NFL. He's done a lot of good. It's like it's just the draft. Like it, it's it's a hard thing to be good at. That's why GMs come and go every every year. One hundred percent. Ra says I do like that we have flexibility. If we don't trade back, I would take best offensive tackle. I would too. Ideally, someone who could play tackle or guard, like Troy Fontanu from Washington, could do both. It's like having another ABT, and that'd be incredibly valuable because you never know what injuries are going to pop up on the O line. It might not just be Tyron Smith. Right. He actually, I, I, I guess I missed him. He has him going 16th. So it looks like Latham's like the sixth lineman off the board, actually seventh. He has Jackson Powers Johnson going 20. Um, that's like, we're in a good spot. I mean, I keep looking at the board and if you, we, I'm seeing guys that are, are good at tackle going from 10 to 20. Uh, we're in a good spot. I don't know. I don't, I don't see the Bowers thing. I would love to hear. I'm sure someone will call in and tell me why. I'm curious. I'm You're really not a curious. Powers boy. I'm not like, and I'm not against him as a player. For our team, I don't see it. I don't see the fit. And I would love to hear it. Um, why, why, why that's the, the right move at 10. I, it's, we got one year to move and groove. I, 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 don't, I don't see it. Dr. Frank Falcone Jr. says, Jake, you should make emojis for your guests like Andrew, Will, etc. We need more channel members for that, but eventually we'll get the Fialco emoji uploaded. Uh, it's so <laughs> YouTube it bothers me to no end with channel memberships. They make you like every like 30 new members, you could upload a new emoji or it's sometimes even more than 30. And it's like, oh, why not let people upload whatever they want to try and get yeah. people more likely to sign up? I think it's ass backwards, but you guys want to yeah. help me out and become an Asmaniac, we'll eventually get the Fialco emoji. Why Sless cuts the line with a super chat. This one is, what's up, Jake? Any word on when we'll get our uniform reveal? Uh, first week of April, itching for some new gear. 
I haven't heard a specific date. I could tell you the Texans are announcing their uniform reveal, I think, on the 23rd. So that would be the week before, or the week of, I should say, of the NFL draft. I would expect the Jets to probably do it in that range as well. They're going to do it, I would think, before the draft because they're going to want their draft pick that rocked the New Jersey, you would think. And the league draft hat indicates that they're going to fully go with the, uh, the retro legacy era Jets logo again based on all yep. indications. So yep. I, I would guess probably second or third week of April is when we'll get a date, but there's been nothing yet on that. Yeah. Um, excited though for the New Jersey's definitely that that'll be, a, I think it's about damn time. Um, but I, something that bothered me actually, they said at the, they said at the um, owner's meeting, I think it was the John Mara was like, we're not ready to get a, a turf field. I mean, a grass field mm-hmm. like that, that that's our next step as like a, organization we got the jerseys fixed we need the field fixed asap but unfortunately not going to happen this year yeah i mean you know the nfl is willing to play two games on a wednesday this year on christmas but you know they they don't have the money apparently two owners in the new york market don't have the money to get grass fields because oh it's too expensive with all the concerts we do really who cares how expensive it is unbelievable how cheap they are and it's it's like woody cares so much about winning that that's a good there's a clear correlation like the, the players happiness and like i don't know it's, it's a big debate whether it actually is like an injury um thing or not i i i, I don't even care to comment on it I, I just know that injuries happen on turf just if you care so much about your players just go do something about it and yeah the wednesday thing is asinine it's unbelievable they came out after COVID and they were like, Goodell was like, we will never play a game on Tuesday or Wednesday if it's not COVID related. And two years later, he's going right back on his word. And um, I actually saw Alan Lazard like commented on it and was like, that team better have a bye. He's, that's the one thing I've seen from Lazard that I agreed with in his like career as a Jet. So, well, yeah. anyone knows, if anyone knows what a bye week is, it's Mr. Healthy Scratch for three games last year, Alan Lazard. Right. Right. God, that's going to be what an interesting discussion. Hobie this year. Paul, start us off. You're first up on the Gus Buster umbrella hotline this morning. What's up, Paul? How's it going, gentlemen? Yo, how we doing? Good, good. So I just I listened to your show earlier and uh, don't mind me. I'm in Manhattan. Let me go back inside. Uh, and I, I heard you mention Artie Lang. So uh, he actually we grew up in the same township. So I uh, I know of Artie pretty well. Uh, let me see what I could do. I know uh, P- my one friend is his first cousin. So maybe we can get a little lucky. But I talked to my brother who knows him decent too. He um he's Jet and Giants. So I think he's a little more Giant fan now. But we'll find out. But true story about how great a guy he is. Um, we had a fireman that died in Union. And he filled our old high school and didn't take a dime. All the money went to the family. So wow. I just think it's a class act. Uh, you know, he just came, he did a little stand up bit, and uh, everybody was there. And he's a pretty damn good baseball player. He was uh, growing up. I used to play against him. That movie he actually made um, was based off of Union uh, Rec Softball. That, that one movie he made, and it's funny because it, the guys' names in it are guys that we, we played ball with in that league. So he really wouldn't remember me too much, but he probably remember my brother. But I'll see what I could do. I appreciate it, Paul. Yeah, he he's a Giants fan. Though. I went back and found the bit I was referencing for those who missed yesterday's show, and he says he's a Giants fan, but his uncle was a Jets fan. But, yeah, maybe he works for both. I don't know. Yeah, it's cool. So uh, I just wanted to let, just wanted to say that. Keep up the great work as always, boys, and talk soon. Thanks, Paul. Good Appreciate man. you. Well, Paul, man, Paul's got one of those iconic voices of, out of the people that call the yeah. show. He does. His first call with me was like a couple of weeks ago when he was, um, I don't know if he was high or drunk or maybe both, but he was like, he was like, you're doing great work with the Patreon, Andrew. And then you were like, you're like, Andrew, do you have a Patreon? I was like, nah. <laughs> He's like, well, you should get one. I was like, all right. Uh, yeah, he's great. Yep. Uh, Paul typically calls when he's drunk, not sober. So that was a rarity. Yeah. Uh, Mad okay. Willie writes in, every year you also have top 10 projected guys who fall like Jermaine Johnson did two years ago. Yeah, 100%. And I think 
best case scenario for the Jets is somehow one of these big four quarterbacks fall and one of them's on the board at 10 and the team's coming up and calling the Jets because yeah. they really could get a lot regardless with the trade chart because teams are desperate for quarterback. The other scenario where they could get a lot in a trade down, you're going to need Bo Nix. You're going to need Michael Penix to go yeah. the first round, go in the teens. It is possible. There is there, there is some Bo Nix uh, love happening. I'm, I, yeah, I'm doing a separate show on Bo Nix uh, later on this week that's going to air on the channel that I'm pre-taping because I'm moving. But there, there is some buzz for Bo Nix going in round one. I know that Matt Miller mock had him in the top 15. So uh, a lot yeah. of draft analysts have Bo Nix going um, – you know, in the team range, which could help the Jets in a trade down. Yeah, I, we, we've been talking about this. Like, I just every week that gets closer to the draft, there's going to be more more chatter about QBs, like, flying up boards. J.J. was, like, a third rounder, I feel like, right out of college. By the time, like, it, it took so quick for it to be like, wow, it's a locked in. He's going at four. Like, it's just crazy how, how much steam these guys pick up. I don't know. Maybe, maybe someone will take um, – uh, Penix at 10. I doubt it. I, I honestly doubt him or Nix at 10. But, like, there's still going to be guys there that, like, if, it, let's say, Pashan who's there and someone really wants him, I, I would rather stick and take him. But if, if, if Joe thinks that we can move back four picks, get a same quality tackle, and then pick up a, a, a top 100 pick, again, that's a no-brainer. A no-brainer, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I still think that's the right approach. But it ultimately – Nobody cares as long as you get the pick right. That's the right. bottom line, you know? Nobody cares as long as you get the pick right. And that's that's the biggest thing uh, for this Jets team going forward. Uh, let's continue with your calls right now. This is a weird name here. J-D-I-J-F next up. Hello. A weird name. Jonathan, the Jet fan. There it is. Hey, how you doing? So, um, this is a question kind of about the, like, the rule change. Uh, they were talking about it a little bit on the Pat McAfee show. And, um, like, I understand, like, the safety for, like, CTE and stuff like that. But to say that, I think they said it was, like, 225 increase of uh, injury rate or something like that. So to say that we're going to go and change rules because certain plays could, like, uh, create injury or whatever, I feel like that's a little excessive. And, like, they were saying how, like, people should, like, sign something. I'm sure they probably do that in boxing. Like, you know you're going into, like, a physical uh, sport. So, boxing's aggressive, football's aggressive, of course. And then, um, but to the CT thing, I get. But I, my point is, anyway, is that... uh, Are you so talking the about K the hip drop tackle or the kickoff? Yeah, off? right. No, the, the hip drop one. So, like, yeah. I feel like that's really not that bad. Like, I get, like, again, the head one. But for it to change everything because of it's going to cause injury, I feel like that's that's excessive. Like, and uh, anyway, on the Pat McAfee show, he was saying, like, you should sign something going into it, saying, like, this could obviously happen, like, you could get injured. Like, I feel like that's a better approach than, excuse me, instead of changing every little thing because it could cause injury. Again, the head one is understandable. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll get your thoughts on it, Andrew. I talked about it a little bit yesterday. To me, football is a contact sport. There's a 100% injury rate. I, I just feel like when we keep adding rules – we're just making it impossible for defensive yeah. players to do their job. Like, I mean, I thought JJ Watt had a great tweet about this yesterday. He's like, just put the flags on now. Like it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's football, man. Like injuries happen. Uh, hits happen. Like you're, you're asking now referees who already struggle with the speed of the game to get calls, right. To be in charge of evaluating another very subjective call. And it's a huge consequence. If the penalty is called, it's 15 yards and an automatic first down. I think it's I think it's going to be a big story at the beginning of next year when in a big primetime game, that penalty is called and that that contributes to a game being decided. Completely agree. It's it's going to affect multiple games next year um, just because the, the rule, like you said, it's not that it's it's just it's like there's so much gray area around it. One, two, I agree with everything you said, so I'm not going to like repeat it. The only other thing that really bothers me is that just putting more just like they keep adding things that the refs can control. So it's a less player controlled league, which is, it's, it's just, it makes it really frustrating. Like we already have so much that like the refs would we feel like control. And now there's another huge rule that it's going to make, I, I believe like defenders even more like hesitant and like could hurt themselves even more. You can't play football hesitant. Everyone's playing at a hundred miles an hour. It's a mess. I can't believe they did that. 
Yeah, I, I just the kickoff rule, by the way, I do like because I, I watched it in the XFL, too. and I mean it's better than what we have now. Like if you're gonna, you know, like the kickoff is not existent now. Like now, now it's a real thing, and I I can't wait for the spot where the Jets need a big return on the kickoff, and they say Brees Hall, go back there, let's go. I can't wait yeah. for that. I don't it, it, I, I'm I'm aligned with you on that one for sure. More of your calls right now. Let's continue to roll here. Appreciate everyone tuning in. Please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want your comment read instantly. Super chat it, and we'll get to it as quickly as we can. Let's sing along, folks. It's time for another V-Man call. Hopefully he no sleeping. Adios mio. <laughs> V-Man. Here we go, baby. Ooh. Ah, the, the Puerto Rican attire. <laughs> hey, Jay, what's up? Yeah, and no, I was in the middle of planning. So, I was going to... <laughs> yeah, I know you guys like it. <laughs> I, I I just put this on just because I thought I'd put up for the song shits and giggles. But can you actually just put you guys back on? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got no. Cause I was actually gonna ask the fans like, so I'm busy planning. Or, or by the way, Jake, I saw that you said you're. What time are you actually planning to be back in the Empire State? Yeah, V-Man, I, I don't want to publicly disclose that information. I'm worried on what you have in store. Well, no, because I, was, I, I said, like I said ages ago, I said that we got to do a welcome back to New York. We, we hit up your, I think a whole bunch of Jets fans, I think a whole bunch of fans of this show should hit up your favorite bar in Manhattan and we'll all meet up for drinks. I, you know, it's in the works, V-Man. I will keep you posted on that, all right? Because I, I, I definitely look forward to meeting you. It's going to be – it's going to be – also, also, Before we do begin to more talk about football, I want to ask – so I'm planning my visit to Puerto Rico. I wanna, so I want to see what do you guys – so uh, so I'm thinking about visiting a distillery. So which one should I visit? So we have Don Cu, which is most popular. We have the toilet water, Bacardi. <laughs> Or we have the very artisanal Ron de Barolito. Which one should so which distillery do I visit? I think you should visit all three because you're an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, I don't have money for that. They're expensive. V Man, like, thank you. That's the end of that V Man call. Now he can go back to sleeping. <laughs> that was an all timer from V Man today. I I feel like he was ready to talk also for like at least another ten minutes about it. Classic V man, and then and then he he brings up things non football related, and then my favorite thing he does is okay, let's now get back to football. It's like you're the one who brings up everything <laughs> but football and uses your valuable time on the air. Oh, that's great. We love you, V man. Uh, more calls right now. Let's go to Bill, who's up next. Hello, Bill. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? What's up, How Bill? Doing? Tell V man that I'll offer him Palo Viejo, which is another Puerto Rican rum, if he wants that. Hey. <laughs> but meanwhile, uh, with regards to uh, to Joe Douglas, I'm sure that uh, he's been working tirelessly not only to on the free agent market, but I'm sure he's trying to work something out with regards to the draft, whether it be a trade or uh, in terms of trying to get a veteran player from another team for one of our draft picks or to uh, – uh, move down in the draft and get that second round pick. Uh, I would think that he's going to focus mostly on the offense for the early rounds. Uh, but uh, I'm wondering for round six and round seven, uh, I was looking at a couple of defensive players there, uh, defensive tackle Mason Smith from uh, LSU and Solomon Bird, who's an edge rusher from USC. But uh, I'm just wondering do you think JD will still try and get more free agents for those positions? Uh, or do you think uh, he should look into uh, getting a couple of these guys for more depth going forward? Well, Bill, one, I give you a lot of credit for watching film on sixth and seventh round, you know, defensive end and, and defensive yeah. tackle <laughs> prospects. I think they're set on D line, unless it's a Jadavian Clowney edition. Maybe if they don't get Clowney, they'd pivot to like a Yannick Ngakwe type. Mm -hmm. But I can see that when, when you're talking about picks that late, it's truly best player available at that point. You're not drafting for need in the sixth and seventh round. You're just trying to find a player that maybe has a, a one elite trait that you think you can maybe develop into being a complete player. Like that's, that's I've heard Mike Tannenbaum talk about this. Like that's that's the thought process of GMs that late. Like find maybe one trait a kid does well and see if 
you know, you get hit on a, a late round pick because of that trait you could develop and that type of thing. I, I do think if they were to address a defensive player or defense defensive position before we got that late in the draft, I think safety is a sneaky position to watch. They haven't added anyone right. yet there. I also think if you're the Jets, you do have to think about defensive tackle. So maybe if there's someone they love with one of their two fourth round picks, I could potentially see it. I mean, a lot of their defensive linemen next to Quinton are on one year deals right now. So it's possible. Yeah, I agree with that. The only other uh, concern I have is obviously we're talking about the future, but uh, the 2025 class or 2024 class of quarterbacks coming in the next draft. Does it look like it could be a deep class or, or may, you know, or would we have to look elsewhere for a quarterback? I get thoughts, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, like the problem is right now it doesn't, it looks like a, a not deep class at all. I'm sure we'll be back around next year and there'll be QBs flying up the board for no reason, but yeah. Remember, uh, Jaden Daniels was an afterthought. Now we might be the second pick of the draft. Right. I mean, he fair, fair point on him, except that he had like a high, like they were talking about him as like a fifth round pick. And then he had like a Heisman season, but the, the QBs for next year. That's what I'm saying I mean, though. A year ago at this time, no one was talking about right. Jaden Daniels being a top two pick. It was all Caleb and Drake may. And now Drake yeah. may might be the fourth quarterback off the board. If you believe the McCarthy hype. Yeah. Which is a crazy, crazy to me. But if you look at it, it's going to be like, like I think they think Shador is going to go number one. I like him. I'm not like a, a hu- I'm not like huge on him. I think that's crazy, a bit. And then like it's like Quinn Ewers. It's not. I'm sure like it'll end up being a better class, but right now it's not. Uh, not the best quarterback class. It looks like. Yeah, I, I mean, look, this stuff changes every year, as you know. I think it's well said. Yeah. Um, super chat from Daryl who writes in. Daryl says. Has anyone from the CFL called about Zach? <laughs> I mean, uh, you should play for you should play for the Houston Roughnecks, man. I feel get, for the kid. Some- I, I I I feel for Zach. I, I do. I know it might just be like, I don't know. I feel for him at this point. I, I, I it would actually like be good for him to go to the XFL. They're like, look at uh, what's his name, yeah. um, AJ McCarron, like. He he parlayed playing. He was the MVP of the XFL, and then he got a backup job. Like, I, yeah, th- th- I think that's the future, man. Eventually, the NFL and the XFL they'll have a partnership, whatever we're calling it, the Ultimate Football League. Now, when they merge, um, yeah, like a- a- every team, if it goes well, will be a- assigned like a minor league team I- in that league, that's and awesome. then you could probably designate players from like your fr- your practice squad or maybe like n- your non active forty six on game day to participate in that for development. Like baseball has a minor league system. The right. NFL doesn't. They, college football serves as, as its minor leagues. But, like, you know, you can't tell me Zach Wilson getting reps in the XFL would somehow be a bad thing for him. Right. I mean, yeah, God knows what's going to happen with him. He just needs to be off the Jets um, for our sake, for his sake. He needs to get a, a change of scenery. And that's about what Woody said. I was like, what the hell is he talking about? Woody always says – Things like that, I, I don't understand. But I was like, "What are you saying?" He was just going back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, "Whatever, you don't." You just didn't need to say it. Anywho, Zach needs to get a new, to change of scenery. Either sit for a couple of years if a team will let him do that, or like you said, go play. It, it would be very useful for these de- de- developmental leagues to be like a minor league, like you said, because these quarterbacks come in. Like, not every quarterback pans out, as we've seen, and it's for like tons of different reasons. So yeah, it would be it would be really helpful if we had a developmental league. One hundred percent. This comment I think is interesting. I wanted to address. I had a bookmark from Michael. He says, "Jake, why does Bowers have to be great immediately, but an offensive lineman can sit the entire year? All things going well, because Bowers at ten is a historic outlier at that position. So he's got to contribute right away because you're bypassing other players at premium positions that in theory could help you." The O-line could sit all year because you're preparing for worst-case scenario. You have two quality tight ends already on your team. So to justify taking Bowers over a receiver where you're still thin at or taking uh, another offensive lineman where you're likely going to be dealing with injuries because it's the Jets and they've led the NFL in injuries on the offensive line the last two years, and their left tackle's always hurt. Like for that, That's why to justify the pick, he has to be great right away. Otherwise, it's like, 
you, you're you're not filling a need. And yeah, you, you're adding another weapon, but at what cost? That's why my point is, if you're going to take Bowers that high, you better be absolutely right that he's going to come in and be what Sam Laporta was for the Lions a year ago. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. And I think the bottom line of it is, it's not like we're in a window where we have so much time for Bowers to develop into this thick Travis Kelsey type of player. We don't have that time. Everyone needs to understand the window we're in. It's a one year, hopefully two years window. We're going for a Super Bowl. Like we got the quarterback we want. Maybe in my eyes, one of the best. Like he's the, one of the best quarterbacks of all time. We have to think about how are we going to win next year. That's the thing. How are we going to make this pick that's going to help us win next year? It's 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 just how JD is going to be thinking. I, I believe. Yeah, and. Like the, the thing too is like, oh, the offensive lineman's going to sit all year. Say that does happen. Well, Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses are on one year deals. So the right. guy you're taking at 10, if they're, if, if that player they take at 10, if Fashano actually got to sit all year, let's say hypothetically, you go yeah. into next year now with him learning from a future Hall of Famer. He's now your left tackle of the future. And that probably means the Jets had an unbelievable season where you'd be picking yeah. at the end of the first round anyway if Tyron Smith played 17 games plus playoffs. So yeah. now what are you doing at tackle? You're going to bring back Tyron Smith again and hope you catch lightning in the bottle at age 34. And Morgan Moses is now 34 years old as well. Like, like to me, it, it's not just about this upcoming draft. You're protecting against disaster this year and the O-line being in shambles. But you're also being prepared for the fact that you're probably ideally never picking this high again over the next couple of years. So how are you finding your future franchise tackle when both your current tackles are on one-year deals? We saw what this franchise has failed to do since DeBrickashaw Ferguson retired. Now you have a chance to maybe get the next DeBrickashaw for a decade, and we're going to turn it down to, for the Jets to be the outlier team to take a tight end in the top 10. I, I can't I can't justify it. I can't either. And we have to understand that tackle is a premium position in the NFL. The top five most position, most important positions in the NFL. I think tackles probably up there. Like after quarterback, after quarterback, it might be tackle. It, it's either tackle or edge rusher. Like yeah, inches really matter. And taking a, that's why like taking a tight end at this premium spot. Like I, I think you've convinced me also, but like it just doesn't really make that much sense. Sense and trading up and. That's why I don't even I'm, – I'm a little bit less down to get a receiver. But if you want to trade up and get a guy like Neighbors and then you think to yourself, hey, we have Neighbors for four years on his rookie deal and we can extend Garrett and when Mike's gone, like we had him for a year, that makes sense because receiver is a premium position too now in, in, in the league we're in. Mm -hmm. I just don't see how it's not receiver or O-line. And then people are going to come in and say Bowers is a receiver. I, I don't know. He's not, know. though. Like, he's still I, listed as a tight end. He still is not going to line up at the X or Y on most of his reps, if not all of them. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just – It's yeah. a great debate. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, great. it's It's fun. I just – I think they're going to end up taking a tackle if they don't trade up for one of the receivers. That's where I'm at right now. Right. And you know how – like, it's we don't hit on receivers in the second or third round. We've had a bad history of – Elijah Moore, Denzel Mims, whatever. The, the the receiver class is deep. It's deep every year now because that's how college football is. So there's receivers that we should love in the second and third round. That's why moving back, recouping a pick, getting a tackle, then taking a receiver that we still have ranked highly sh should be on the board as a as a really high possibility as well. Yep. All right, we got a bunch of super chats coming in here. A super chat flurry. Thanks to everyone for the support. This one is from John who writes in week five Hackett finds out Mike Williams is elite. God. I mean that the Hackett yeah. quote about Brees Hall still just, it's mind boggling. It was actually said out loud. It's just crazy. Well, from the wait, what did he say? After the giants game is when he learned that Brees Hall is wow. really good as a receiver. Like, come on, man. 12 year olds who play Madden knew that. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying we don't have to be worried about, I, I know it's crazy but we don't have to be worried about Hackett this year. Like, I, I know how crazy that sounds, but we don't. It's Rodgers' it's Rogers offense. So Synth Punk writes in, aren't you in the shadow realm, Synth Punk? Jake, this year is great offensive tackle class. Draft the tackle in the third round. They, see, yes, you can maybe find a quality tackle in the third round, but it's deeper at receiver than it is offensive tackle. I asked Dane Brugler this, this exact question because I played out the scenario with him when he came on the show Combine Week. To me. It's more logical for the Jets to get their tackle in round one 
and then take a chance on day two in the you know at receiver. There's more. There's right. there's better level of prospects. They're not saying you can't find a tackle in the third round. Like if um, what's his name Patrick Paul somehow was there at seventy two from Houston. I, I really like that pick um, for the Jets, but. I, I think it's easier for them to go tackle round one and get receiver on day two. Ideally, they trade back and could get a second round pick and could do it then because then you're increasing your chances of getting a quality player. Right. I, I'm not going to act like I, I have like deep, deep knowledge of like the tackle depth in this draft. I just would assume that like as every draft, there's just deeper, um, there's more depth in the receiver area. It's just like ha- there's just more of them and it's kind of how it goes. Yep. Super chat. This one is from Rick Kent, the great Rick Kent, who accused me of wearing a giant sweatshirt today, Rick. How dare you? Uh, Tyron Smith will miss games. We need a tackle at 10. Yeah, a $10 super chat to represent a tackle at 10. I agree. Or tackle at 13. Move back. Get an extra third round pick. Done. You're still getting a really good player there. Would have no problem with that either. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, Bottom line. The, the, the two tackles will not be healthy the entire year. So you either want – and then I understand, like, people saying, well, why would we use the pick 10? But you made the point already. Like, th- these two tackles we have are on one-year deals. Left tackle and right tackle is two of the most important positions in the NFL. If you want Rodgers to play for more than one year, then you should be all for every investment we make on the offensive line. Do you want to protect Aaron Rodgers or not? Because yeah. that's really what it comes down to. Because if you think about it, the less he gets hit, the more likely he comes back for another year and is still playing at a high level. That's part of it, too. Completely. Like, if he gets through this year, but he's like Joe Burrow getting under siege at age 40, does he really want to put his body through that again? He might call it quits. Like, that's that's part of this, too. Like, we're, look, yeah. I love Rodgers, but he did the I'm, I'm going to retire possibly in Green Bay like Farb did for a couple of years in a row for Packers fans, too. He could be doing that yep. to the Jets next year if he's under siege, even if he says he wants to play two or three more years. 100%. You, there's no way in hell that if he gets like any like little mid to major injury again, that it won't be a huge discussion. And it, it's more than likely. So we got to we gotta protect him. That, that's the number one thing. He'll, he'll elevate the pass catchers. That's what we have to understand. He will. He shall. Oh, yeah. John writes in. If Brock is Kelsey Andrews, Laporta, Kittle, or Hawkinson, worth it at 10, I personally want to trade up for neighbors or Rome at 10 or a trade back for offensive tackle. Yes, John, if you tell me that Brock Bowers is maybe the greatest tight end of all time and Travis Kelsey, he would be worth a top 10 pick. My yeah. point to you is all those guys you mentioned there, besides Hawkinson, were not first-round picks. That's what's scary right. about this. He, like Brock would be a huge outlier if he's as good as any of those guys you mentioned on the screen. And with all due respect to Hawkinson, he's good. He's not at the same level as Kelsey, Andrews, Laporta, or Kittle, in my opinion. Yeah, Hawk is really good. He's, he's, I feel like he gets injured a ton. Uh, these mock drafts are, like, really tough for me. I don't understand. And I assume that they, these guys all talk to people within the league. And so I can't really knock them. But like I do, like right now, okay, I found one where Roma Dunze goes to the Jets at ten. That makes more sense. I don't really understand why Brock is getting like so much like, like uh, momentum to us. I like I it though. It's... But you know, as long as they don't actually take him at ten, Andrew, it's way <laughs> different than last year when everyone knew they needed a tackle. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're now right. in a spot where if like the league thinks they're actually going to take Brock, and Douglas is like, ha 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 ha, I have played them. Like, that's right. actually not bad for the Jets, all things considered, to let the league think they're doing one thing and then they're ready to pivot and do something different. Right, which would be, it would, it would be, it would be um, rare for a change. So, yeah, that's fair. I, I just don't – this is why I hate mock draft season, but whatever. It is what it is. Do you hear that, or is that just me? I saw it. I saw it. Do you hear it? Yep. That's Joe Douglas music! <laughs> I thought I thought, I thought you talked about the uh, you got to check the chat. Uh oh. Oh, Rick. Whoa, I see what yeah. you see here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Rick Kent has redeemed himself for accusing me of wearing a New York Giants sweatshirt. He is gifting five memberships. He's making it rain, people. Money, 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 money. money, 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 money. The following 
as maniacs just became as maniac channel members courtesy of our friend the great rick kent if you hear your name called make sure you thank rick because he's coming through for you jet fans indy jets ronnie d steven sparagus or sparagus nick w and ghost all received memberships if you didn't get one gifted to you it's randomly assigned based on the youtube algorithm like every video Comment, engage, spread the word. The more you watch, the more you like and engage on the channel, the more the algorithm favors you for those random giveaways. Very kind of you, Rick. Thanks for supporting the show. We got more Super Chats to get to, then we'll get back to your calls here with Andrew Fialco. This one's from the big fella. He Super Chats us, and he says, <laughs> Matt Miller put out the worst mock I've ever seen. Take a look at this cluster bleep. Look, he's doing a seven-round mock, man. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. At that point, you're just guessing, right? Like, I, I get mad like a lot Chad of credit. GBT. Yeah, he's got to be using, like, chat GBT or something after, like, round four. I, would, I mean, God knows how long he spent to, like, make a seven-round mock, which is crazy. And he, he had descriptions for, like, the first 90 guys. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Every every year he does it. So, I guess, like, that's what like, – he has some credentials. They're all – BS to me. Like we we know how the, like the top four is going to go in whatever order, and then from there, well, I guess we just have to wait and see. So, can I tell you that uh, why why I think Big Fella doesn't like Matt Miller's mock? Yeah, Jets Mister Irrelevant pick quarterback Joe Milton, Tennessee. Oh no, Big Fella that, that... fan didn't like Joe Milton. I think that's why he hates Matt Miller's mock. Okay, I was going to say. Oh wow! And we go Brad. Oh Brady Latham at two fifties. That's uh, that would like make the the Asman show would go crazy because then um I I feel bad and he's probably gonna call in and and chat me. But um the guy that I was talking about or the boxing guy I don't, I don't Gary. know. I Gary Gary loves Joe Milton, right? Oh, he loves him. He he thinks he should be a top five pick. See that the the, the I, 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 I made that part of it. Isn't he? he he just uh, loves Joe Milton. He was trying to argue that Milton's a better prospect coming out than Zach Wilson was, which is just objectively not true. Like it's just not correct. Yeah, it's not. Um, but if the Jets took Milton at Mister Irrelevant, that would be that would be that would be funny. He's that'd our next fun. Brock Purdy, Andrew. Watch out. Yeah. More of your calls yeah. right now. If you got to run, let me know because I got some people on hold. No. I can take them. No, I'm uh, good. All right, cool. Let's go to Adam, who's up next on our show. What's up, Adam? What's up, guys? How are you? Hey, what's up, yeah, Adam? Well. Where are you calling us from? England, not hey. England. England. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, mine was just a bit of a weird one. You know, with the, the Vikings, have now got two first-round picks. Um, it, it looks as if the reason they've done that is so they can move up for a quarterback. You don't think they'd move up from where they are to 10 with both first-round picks, surely, to give to us? I think that'd be a bit much. Do you reckon they've got them saved for like a top four pick? Yeah, I I don't think you acquire an extra first if you're not planning on getting into the top five. Like I, they they didn't need to trade capital to get that extra first. If they just wanted to come up, I think they're at the Vikings at thirteen, right? Or no, they were at eleven, right? They're right behind the Jets. So yeah, I, yeah, they're I, 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 I they're planning on trying to get into the top five, not just move up one spot. Cool. I mean, it depends how far the quarterbacks fall. I mean, all the mock drafts at the moment are so different. You know, JJ's gone from being what top twenty-five to being top five. Now it's it's the quarterback market is crazy in the draft, really, isn't it? But yeah, thanks thanks for that, guys. And thanks for the call, man. Call back anytime. How about that? That's awesome. Love that. Jets probably coming to Adam this season. That's the word on the street. Yeah. Um, we making the trip, Andrew? You coming out with me? That's are you going to go? Here. Are you coming to England to watch the Jets play football <laughs> with me and others? Man, I would love to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get screwed because I'm going to be, like, teaching. I would love to. Oh, maybe I'll swing something around and make that work. We'll make it happen. Synth yeah. Punk is back with another one. He writes in, newsflash, tight ends are part of the trenches and also block. Yes, they block. But we're not going to sit here and act like that if the Jets took Brock Bowers, all of a sudden he could go and play left tackle when Tyron Smith is out for the five or six games you know he's going to miss. Right. And this isn't like, again, I'll just say my, say my piece because I have not watched a ton of film on Brock. I've watched his pass, his pass catching film a bunch. He's, he's a great pass catcher. This isn't like Michael Mayer, who's like a, like a distinct like good run blocker. 
This is like a, a guy who's like going to be used like he was at Georgia everywhere on the field. He rarely was like in line at tight end, which is like right next to the tackle for everyone that that doesn't know that. Um, that that he's not going to be used as that. Wherever he goes in the NFL, you would think he's going to be used as like this power slot type of guy where they'll just use him all around and not really as a tight end. That's why I almost understand like the wide receiver takes, but he's not a receiver. So that that's where we need to like call a spade a spade. John writes in England and Arizona trips. Hey, those are two great road trips right there. I'll tell you what. Arizona, I think, would make a lot of sense, especially if it's like later in the season. Who wouldn't want to go to a warm city for a road trip, Jet fans? And then, I mean, if the Jets are in London, I've never been. I've always wanted to go. I got friends who live there. That'd be tremendous. So I'm in on both. Hopefully it happens. Uh, Indy Jets writes in, where is the lane train? Where is he? We don't know. He hasn't called in. But uh, we, we hope he does soon. Bruce Hall. We love Lane Train. All right, more calls right now. Rob the Jet Fan is up next. Yesterday he told us he busted a nut laughing so hard, so that sounded a little wrong, but it makes sense if you really think about it. What's up, Rob? I meant gut. <laughs> I meant gut. Gut. <laughs> I apologize to all the as- asthmaniacs. I meant gut. <laughs> hey Andrew, how you doing, buddy? Hey, how's it going, man? Good to see you again. Good, good. I just wanted to um, go on a few points here, Jake, on the O line, and the most important thing we got to do, Andrew, is keeping the uh, AR upright and in the yeah. game. I mean, people forget that after four plays, he was out for the year. And we're talking about going after Bowers. Like, you know, people have this obsession with Bowers. And I kind of agree with Jake. I mean, Bowers, if he's not looking at at least 800 yards or 1,000 between 8 to 10 touchdowns of productivity, I mean, what are we looking at? We're looking at – I'm not going to say that he's a bust. It's not what I'm saying. But we'd be very disappointed if he didn't have a year like that. So, yep. you know, with AR, if he's gone, we're in a lot of trouble. Like, you know, we got to keep him up, upright. We got to get an old lineman because chances are that old lineman, whoever we get, is going to see action this year because Smith is probably not going to go 17 games. There's a possibility that uh, Moses is not going to go 17 games. Someone's going to get injured. These guys are going to get inserted right away, is what we need. And um, I wanted to also say about that new hip tackle rule, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, TJ's right. You might as well put, you know, flag football on them. It's ridiculous. And the last thing I just wanted to make a statement on, Jake, I saw a show from you. It was well over a year ago. Uh, I think the guy was named Gelp or something. Uh, You did a show with him. This is like prior to getting Aaron Rodgers. And it just proves how much people can't predict quarterbacks because this guy was saying, this guy Gelp was saying, oh, um, you know, Bryce Young is a no-brainer, but C.J. Stroud, I like, but, you know, I don't see anything more or less special about this guy. And look how he turned out. So I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that all these quarterbacks that everyone is so high about, J.J. and and um uh you know uh Drake May or, or or Daniels, no one really knows at the end of the day. Yeah. So I, I feel a lot more confident in going with an old lineman to help our line and keeping even though Aaron Rodgers is 40 going on 41 upright for this year. That's what I think. Yeah, Rob, excellent call. Keep up the uh good work there on the uh, nutbuster hotline. Well done. Uh let me say this though, to his point about Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. So I, I spoke with Nick Casario, the Texans GM at the Combine, and and I and I said to him, you know, uh, you know, as a Jet fan, I want you to know I'm jealous that, you know, you hire the Niners defensive coordinator, you take a, a quarterback number two overall, and yeah. it works out. And he laughs and goes, sometimes you get lucky. And he's right because the Texans wanted Bryce Young. They tried yeah. to trade up to number one to take Bryce Young. Trust me, it's been verified by multiple people that that was their intention. Stroud was not their number one choice. It worked for them. They got lucky. Like, 
you need luck, man. Like, that's the bottom line. It's such a crapshoot with these quarterbacks. And, like, the Texans are the greatest example. They were mocked for winning that game against Indy the last week of the regular season two years ago. It's the best thing yeah. that ever happened to their franchise. They now have C.J. Stroud, and they're a legitimate Super Bowl contender for as long as he's on the field healthy. Agreed. And my takes on it is that it's hard to say whether or not Bryce would be as good as C.J. in the same offense. Like, the, the, the sad thing about it is, a lot of where the quarterbacks get drafted matters. Like environment just matters. Like support groups matter. Coaching matters. So like to say like like I, that's why like people that come out and say like Bryce Young sucks, it'll always piss me off because the kid played has played one year in the NFL, had a sh really bad support system, the worst O line in the NFL basically. Like no receivers. I don't judge kids like off of one year out of college just like that. Um, but like you, that's the only thing. I think Stroud's like awesome. Uh, I, I, I mean, he is. He also has a really good support group around him. You just never know. Like if if ta if the tables were turned and Bryce was their quarterback, if um if uh wow, I'm I'm so out of shape with football. I'm forgetting like my favorite. Uh, if Slowick Slowick might have made a better offense around Bryce Young. Slowick made a great offense around CJ. Like it's it's not coincidence that a kid comes in his first year and plays that damn well. There's got to be good coaching involved, good O-line play involved, and good receiver play involved, which which they had in Houston. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey, yo. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. The Dark Knight has rose from the ashes. Dark Knight Steve, secret agent Steve, has gifted 20 Jake Asman as Maniac memberships. 20! 20 memberships. That is $100 spent for oh, listeners wow. of this show. Shout out to you, Dark Knight Steve. You are a legend. Sunny85, Alma Club, Zach, Funky Fresh Frank, Jet830, Tony Alvarado, Rich Samini's Crusty Tissue. What a name. Giovanni Alcia, Andrew Bach12, AC, Peter, Kevin Risco, James St. Patrick, Mario. Uh, oh, where'd the list of names go? Hold on. We're going to get everyone shouted out here. Steve has earned that. Uh, Giovanni Alcia, AC, I said that. Kevin Risco, James A. Patrick, Mario Rapallo, Coops, Mike F. By the way, Coops, happy belated birthday to your fiance. Uh, Roy Spence, Kevin Ragbasina. Unbelievable. 20 memberships just gifted. We got everyone there. Shout out to Dark Knight Steve. That is as good as it gets, baby. Love it. Love that. All right. A couple more calls before we wrap. Let's go to Dre, who's up next. What's up, Dre? What's up, my guys? Andrew, you are by far one of my favorite guests that he has on. Your intelligence and your the way your eloquence, the way you break it all down, it is by far and away like one of my favorite things to do. Like I watch film better because you've been on the show. I just yeah. want you to know that. But that, that um means a lot. Appreciate you. No, you you you're for not this is what you were this is what you were born to do. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I, and if I, I own the Jets. I would have hired you as my quarterback, was my quarterback whisperer. <laughs> I really would, <laughs> but um, because especially when you were talking that that breakdown you did earlier, where you were saying, "Hey, you know, you're talking to the quarterback, you're looking at the film, you're saying, oh, hey, this looks great,' and then he's like, "Oh, well, I should have done this." He and then he because people, at least good quality, um good quality athletes, they're going to be super self-critical. They were like, oh, I should have done this. I, I did everything wrong. They did everything right. But in their minds, they were like, oh, I just did the best. I made so many mistakes going up until that point. But yeah. that's neither here nor there. I, I, I'm i going to take these hands and I'm going to slowly grip um, Gary's neck and shake him around a little bit because the Bowers thing just has to stop. It boggles my mind. It, it blows my mind that we have – that we have Jet fans that see what we need, see what Aaron Rodgers is. Everyone on the planet, if you were a Jets fan, you was beating your chest. You were super excited. Just go back to the clips. You see all the, all the takes I had. I kept saying we were going to go fourteen and three. We were gonna we were gonna destroy the league. Like we were going to be the bullies. 
We were going to be America's sweetheart, everything. It was going to be great. Aaron Rodgers was going to bring us everything. And it all centered around him. And all of it went down in four plays. And we had people talking about, oh, yeah, we got to get weapons. We got to get this. No, what we need to do is build a bunker around Aaron Rodgers. I, like, if I could, which would be crazy, I would make all, all like seven or eight draft picks that I have, like nine picks. All of them would be offensive linemen. I'd be like finding ways, like I'm going to invent, invent schemes that keeps him from even being touched. I don't even want Rodgers breathed on by the defense. And I, you know, he's going to elevate what we have. Obviously, we're going to have to add something. But if that first pick isn't an old lineman, it's because somehow the Jets are getting Marvin Harrison. And uh, Jake, just in referring to your last, the last mock draft you did, the the night before you were talking about if there's a way like at eight, all of a sudden Harrison is there, um, like he, whatever it takes, trade our first round no, pick no, no, next no. year. I, I, I do I would have trade I next know. year's one. I said I would trade next year's two. Like if Mike Tandemum did a mock for those who missed it yesterday. I covered it on the show where mm -hmm. for, somehow Marvin Harrison was there at nine for the Bears. And I said, if you're the Jets, you get on the phone, get Atlanta's number eight pick and you take them. Mm -hmm. At eight, but yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm the selling trade everybody. Next year, not next year. I'm one, trading my children. <laughs> I'm trading my children. I'm like, here's my firstborn daughter. You know, do the best you can. But you know. get, out, get, out, get, out, get out of here, Dre. You're trading your children. I love it, man. Dre's, Dre's a crazy Jeff fan. Love the passion. Look, I love Marvin, man. I, I mean, I, I don't know how he's somehow there at nine for Chicago, but if yeah. he somehow is there. Jets need to get on the phone and. Trade next year's two and a in a in a fourth or even a third this year if need be and get it done. He's he, that is worth bypassing the offensive lineman and then you're going to need to sign Bakhtiari. You're going to need to bring in McGovern. You're going to need to just try yeah. and just patch it up that way because Marvin Harrison Jr. is worth it. This is like the you know Jamar Chase versus Panay Sewell debate. To me, Marvin Harrison Jr. is like Chase. He he justifies taking the receiver over the lineman. Yeah, I agree, and I think people were like. The fact he didn't run at the combine, everyone was thinking he's going to drop in the draft. I, he's, not, I don't see him getting past five. Um, but I mean, we could hope for sure. We can hope. We can hope and pray. Yeah. Uh, Jets, Jets, Jets says, send first day Jets to Shadow Realm. What What has he said that's been so bad? Have I missed something? Yeah. This is the most recent comment from him. Trubisky went over Mahomes. Stuff happens. Draft ain't perfect. I do agree with that. I, I don't think that's shadow realm worthy. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree as well. I think that's a sensible take, unless there's things I miss, which is certainly possible. Big Fella writes in, is there enough now for the chicken soup emoji? Big Fella, I'm going to check, and we will add that chicken soup emoji in honor of Charles if we have hit the threshold for Asmaniacs. I wanted to read this comment from Roger here. He says, Jake's been a big part of my diabetic foot infection. I almost lost. Jake's been keeping me going the last six months. Thank you, Jake. Roger, that is so kind of you, man. Uh, best of luck with everything you're going through. And, you know, I'm I'm glad that our show is able to entertain you and get you through a tough time. Can we get Roger a membership, man? I know Roger keeps asking for it in the comments. It's all, it's all randomly assigned. I'm shocked that YouTube hasn't given him one yet. So we'll work on that for you, Roger. All right, a couple more calls, then we'll wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears like Bobby Midnight has a special guest with him, Andrew. Let's go to Bobby. Here we go. What's up, Bobby? It's my brother, yeah. Mikey. Hey. 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 <laughs> Are we on delay, Bobby? What's uh -huh. happening? Uh, Zach Wilson might go to the Raiders. Do you hear that story? I did not. I, I don't think that's going to happen, though. And they said. Ah, Bobby, you're, I, I think uh, your internet's acting up. There was a little delay in the background. <laughs> but shout out to Bobby great. and Mikey. We love them. Uh, they, 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 they're the best. Uh, NY Jets Florida, our last caller on the first show of the day. What's up, NY Jets? Oh, crap. Sons of bitches. My internet okay? It's not great, but yeah. oh. we'll make it work. Oh, sorry. Hey, Andrew, I, I, I didn't mean to call you out, but I did. I did. I did go back to the uh, the actual uh, video. It took me a minute. And on January 25th, ironically, you were wearing a Buccaneer red sweatshirt. You said that uh, you didn't like him, JJ, as a I don't like him as a prospect. That's right. You did I said. say that. So, so I, was, I was wrong. Yeah, uh, I'm just I'm just saying I'm just saying, you know, with all due respect, 
I have three businesses. Uh, I'm not an expert on anything. There could be somebody better than me in, in, in any respect, even as a yeah. human. So uh, that's all I was trying to say was, you know, everyone has an opinion and you, you are a film guy. And like you said, it's, it's inconclusive how you rate, uh, you know, players and that, what they're looking at and things like that. So I, I wasn't trying to bash or anything, but I do no, have no. a question. Why? Yeah. Why? Um, why would you pass on? Why would teams trade out for Marvin Harrison when he's such an elite prospect, supposedly? Why? Why would they? Everyone needs an elite receiver, including the Patriots, the Chargers, you know, um, the the um, Titans need a they have a Will Levis. They need a receiver. Why, why would you trade that guy? And, and it's like a red flag to me. You know why Harbaugh seen Harbaugh seen that guy every year. Why if he's not taking him? Why I mean I don't understand why you would why teams would pass on him is my question. And maybe they want a, an offensive lineman instead. I actually can answer that in my Jets Florida here. Here here was uh, John Harbaugh earlier today or yesterday talking about the offensive line. This is why there's thought there's a thought that they might pass on a receiver at five. The offensive line to me is 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 important. I mean, if I ask you the question of like what position group depends on no other position group to be good, but every other position group depends on them to be good, you know, what position group is that? Offensive line. They're not relying on any other position group to be good. They go out and they're good. But yet every other position group relies on the offensive line to be good. And, and, and then the D-line. They'll like they'll be the ones that argue back. Ah, we don't, you know, we don't need the offensive line to be good. Do you? Do you like? Do you like when they, when the offense has a 12 play drive and you know the, the field position? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You're right. You know, it's like. So yeah, that building that, you know, building that, uh, you know, kind of offensive line. That's exciting. You know, can't wait to can't wait to do that. April 2nd. Let's get it started. Let's go. You know? So do you feel ready to roll? What you guys. That's maybe why he would go O-line in a loaded O-line class over receiver. Uh, by the way, I think I said John Harbaugh. That's obviously Jim Harbaugh, the Chargers coach. But, like, you know, that's that's the argument, right? Like, it's like you, you have this explosive weapon if you can't get on the ball because the O-line sucks. Like, that that's the argument there. I see that as smoke. I, I just do like I do too I because do. they have a decent O line as is. I'm just saying like right. that's why a team would would maybe have oh, a yeah. O line and no weapons would choose O line over receiver. The Jets did oh, that did that yeah. in 2020 with Becton. They chose Becton over right. Jerry Judy or CD Lamb, right? Or was Lamb yeah, gone already? I forget. I forget that draft. Was Lamb already off the board when they took Becton? I don't believe so. I don't think. I feel like none of the receivers were off the board. Yeah, that's if the case. I, and they chose offensive line over weapon. Obviously, it wouldn't have been a big deal if they took Werfs, but they took the wrong player. That's why yeah. I say get the pick right. No one's going to care what they do at 10 if they get the pick right. Completely true. And everything that Harbaugh says was true there. I just think he's like kind of like overglazing it when in reality they just lost Keenan and Mike Williams. They received, they have the worst receiver group in the NFL right now. Just yep. bottom line. Quinn Johnson didn't really have a good year last year. Um, Josh Palmer's solid. And then Darius Davis. They, they Like Marvin, they, they, I, I would be shocked if they didn't take Marvin at five. So, Ladies and gentlemen, Dre. A man who said he would trade his child for the Jets to trade up and get Marvin Harrison Jr. has decided to gift five as maniac memberships for the following people. But first, Dre, we say thanks for making it rain. Money, 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 money. Scott Collins, Zach Tendler, Fendi007, Carlos Piscoa. And Vinny Ferro all received channel memberships, courtesy of our guy, Dre. Pretty cool. Great job, Dre. John writes in with a super check and a wrap up here shortly. He says, I think JD is allowed to trade next year's one. I don't. Um, I, I, maybe he could pound the table if it was truly Marvin Harrison Jr. And that was like clearly his guy. Maybe. Uh, I personally don't think so. Also, a Henny emoji. I'll, I'll think about that, John. I like that idea. Yeah, Your you thoughts, gotta, Andrew. Yeah. Number I one, is it on the table? 
get the henny emoji first off and then <laughs> um maybe like I, I really would wonder who like decides if it's on the table or not like is, is that woody is that woody uh yeah i guess woody would be involved in that that level of the decision like if you're gonna make a mm-hmm. trade for next year's one the owner could step in and say i'm not comfortable doing that yeah when the sad part about woody is he i think he knows like the least about football out of any owner in the nfl maybe a lot of the owners don't know football but he definitely it feels like he knows like no real football so most I really of them know, don't know football dude a lot of right them don't. i figured that <laughs> Maybe like our football operations guys could get involved with that, like the, the our support staff. But Rex Hogan's gone also now, so I don't really know. I don't. We never hired another assistant GM, right? No, the uh, the the rumblings are Phil Savage, who was the former GM of the Browns and has been front offices okay. for years, has a bigger role now. All right. Um, then I wonder. Like, I don't care what Woody really has to say about it. Uh, hopefully, if that's why it's tough that he's our owner. But I don't know. It. it could, I think it could be on the board, but I we we're not gonna do it. Like I think Douglas is too like savvy of a of a GM to ever send his like next one away. He's gonna try and make a deal. He's a move back type of guy. I, I I'm telling I'm really feeling like we're gonna move back as of today. I'm a fan of that. Big fella writes in. Is there gonna be a meetup in New York City to celebrate your arrival? Big fella, yes. We're gonna do more listener meetups. So I'm excited. Just like we did the Long Island one when I was in town for a couple of weeks. Uh, back in October slash November. So yes, Andrew, we'll we'll be doing a big meetup, and you'll be there. Yeah, this is my uh, where I am right now. Everyone, everyone always says, "Why are there sirens?" It's beautiful city of New York. <laughs> yeah, you are. You, you, your apartment is like set up where just sirens are blasting at all hours of the day. Every, and hey, someone nice. said he looks. Someone said he looks like he's living in a prison cell. I, I'd so see that because that's just like all white. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a nice. Yeah. Are you in a one bedroom or a studio? Studio, studio. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. Um, all right, let's make sure we didn't miss any super chats here. I don't believe we did. Quick reminder that if you want the hat that Rogers rocks, if you want a Hugo House hat, you can get it 15% off with promo code ASMIN at checkout. You guys have been seeing me wear this on the show. Aaron's always rocking it. Shane Gillis wears Hugo House. Tyler Conklin, oh, by the way, is rocking Hugo House. Really cool. Check it out. Their website, H-U-E-G-A-House.com. Promo code ASMIN for 15% off at Check out. Andrew, final thoughts before we get out of here. Let me ask you this. If the New York Jets over the next week sign Jadavian Clowney, you would rate that from one to ten as a what kind of move? Depends on the money. Um, but player wise, uh I'll keep it I'll keep it um New York style because it's uh if ever if anyone watches Portnoy pizza reviews. I'd give it like a, a legitimate like it's it based like let's say it's a good deal. I give it like a nine two. I'm I love Clowney, huge huge Clowney guy. We'll do a film breakdown of Clowney yeah. with you. We'll get your thoughts on that. So I'm, be, I'm itching to get that. That would be that cool. Going. He's Andrew Fialco. My name is Jake Asman. Make sure you guys read Andrew's stuff on JetsXFactor.com. Robbie Sabo made a smart business decision bringing Andrew <laughs> on board. Also follow him on Twitter at afialco21. You can check them out there. I'll be back this afternoon, 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern, with the Buffalo Jet fan in his weekly spot. So looking forward to that. Once again, I want to thank everyone who took time to watch today's show. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. And, oh, yeah, before we go, perhaps, Andrew, I don't know if if you're up for this, we should take one more call. Andrew Fialco is on hold. So let's go to Andrew, who's up next. Hello, Andrew. Hey, Jake. The chat keeps blowing up with these Zach Wilson truthers. So I want to show you some film on this guy to help tell the story. Okay, let's start with this pass to Garrett Wilson. Here's against the Bills. You can see if I stop it here. Zach has a clear (laughs) shot at Garrett with nobody in his face. Play it forward a bit. Garrett Garrett is fighting off the defender here, but single coverage. Stopping here, you see how even a six-year-old blind albino alligator could have thrown this in a better spot. Thank God, Garrett is a friggin' (laughs) stud as he makes the catch, allowing Zach to celebrate like he helped the team win a Super Bowl. Here, Garrett tells the ref, hey ref, did you see how fucking horrible that throw was and I still caught it? Disgusting. One more film breakdown here as we see Zach returning from the sideline, unable to navigate himself with any success back to the huddle. Thankfully, his teammates were there to help him up off the ground. But unfortunately for Zach, they chose to not help him. 
Zach's ass had a large bruise that took a while to heal, although his mom's friend gave him some aloe to rub on the buttocks, and that helped a little. <laughs> Next week, I'll have a full film breakdown of Cole Thompson's scooter crash from the Combine. Thanks for having me, Jake. Gator sucks. Oh, oh my God. Well, thank you for that uh, film breakdown, Andrew. Dude, Great job. I was waiting. I was like, one day, I w- I've seen those before. I'm like, Gator's got to get me one, one, on more of these. Oh, Gator. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was damn good. Ha, 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 ha.